Hey guys and welcome back to the Mission 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over a basic system for when the AI catches you. So previously we've also set up an AI chase system so it will see you and chase you. Now we're going to have something for when it actually catches you. So let me show you what we're going to make today and this works in both third and first person. So for third we're going to have this. So if it sees us it's going to chase us and it will make us face AI, play this animation, fade to black and restart the level. And then if I go in first person, so we intercept it again, we're going to chase us, turn us around, play the animation, and then restart the level again. So like I say, this is what we're going to make today. Very simple, but quite effective. So it's similar to something like Hello Neighbor, if you've seen that. Again, this is what we make today. Once again, another request, one of the many ones I have. So let's create this. I'll delete the code, and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to open up our AI blueprint. So for me, I've just simply named it AI. I'm going to open that up straight away here. In here, what we're going to do is we're going to come off of or after the AI chase code. So this is the code I have for chasing the player, which again I set up in a previous tutorial. So just after this, not actually linked to it, but just near it, I'm going to right click and add a custom event. And I'm going to name this one catch player or caught player or anything along those lines. And out of this, I'm going to set some booleans to be true. So let's make those booleans now. So I'm going to hit plus variable and I'm going to name this one can move question mark. And actually, no, I'll have one variable, so I'll put them both into one, naming it court or catch player, and again, anything along those lines. Compile it, and by default, we're going to have it as false. And then we're going to set this to be true off of the catch player there. So out of catch player, I'm going to set that to be true. Out of this, we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. The object is going to be get player character. After this, we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch with the condition of court. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to create a loop and we only want to loop it if we have been caught. So then we're also going to right click and add a custom event and I'm going to name this rotation loop. As that's what the loop's going to do, is it's going to cause our player to rotate and face the AI. So we're just setting it up to use it later. Now let's actually set up rotating the player. So out of true, so if we are caught, we want to rotate. So we're going to come out of as third person character, which is as your character, I'm going to set actor rotation, plugging that into true of the branch there. For the new rotation of this, what we want to do is come out of as third person character, get actor location, and then underneath this, we're going to right click, get actor location again. So we're getting the location of our player and the AI. Out of get actor location for the player, we're going to find look at rotation, plugging a target as the AI's rotation there, location there. So this is just going to find the rotation that we need to go to to face the AI. And now instead of just connecting this straight in, as that will snap it, so that will snap, we want to just smoothly rotate it. So we're going to come up the return value and get an R interp2. The current will not be the find lookout rotation. Find lookout rotation will be target. The return value will then go into new rotation. And current is going to be play as current rotation. So as third person character, get actor rotation plugging that into the current like so. The delta time, what we want to do is we want to come out that and get world delta seconds. And that's just so that it's smooth dependent on what your frame rate is. Because like I say, it's the delta time in seconds, which is the time in between each frame. Interp speed is how fast you want it to be. So I'm gonna set mine to be five, which is how fast it was at the start of the video. But you can increase this or decrease this to get it as fast or slow as you like. That's not that, it's gonna rotate the player. However, we're only firing this off once, so we'll rotate once and then stop. So that's why we want to create a loop. But this is also only going to rotate the player in third person. We also want to do first person as well, so I'd recommend keeping both of these on anyway. However, if you're not doing first, then you don't need to do this one, but if you are doing first, keep the third in as well. So then after set actor rotation, we're going to right click and get player controller. I'm just going to put that underneath there like so. Out of this, we're going to set control rotation, which is going to rotate the camera. New rotation, we want to do the exact same thing we did here. So what I'm going to do is get the RM to up to and get world delta seconds, plug in the return value and the new rotation there, like so. The current is obviously going to be our current control rotation. So out of get player controller, we're going to get control rotation, plugging that into the current there. And the target is again going to be this find lookout rotation that we got earlier, plugging that straight in there like so. So now this is going to rotate the player towards the AI. But again, we want to loop it. So how do we do that? Well, out of set control rotation, what we're going to do is just call the function. So call function rotation loop. So that is then going to loop 
to catch the player. However, one small thing we missed is out of this branch, we want to hold down D, left click to get a delay, setting this to 0 0.001. And that just prevents us from getting an infinite loop so we can actually end this loop and not be constantly doing it forever. So that will now work perfectly to get the player to face the AI. So now we also want to play an animation. So what I'm going to do is out of the rotation loop, I'm going to hold down O, left click to get a do once node because we don't want to spam the animation loads, only rotating it. We want to do this one once. So I've completed, we're going to hold down S, left click to get a sequence, connecting that in there like so. I'll do then one first as that's going to end the loop. So off of then one, I want to hold down D, left click to get a delay. I'm going to set the duration of this one to be 0.5 seconds. This is essentially how long you think it's going to take for your player to rotate and face the AI. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 seconds just to be safe. Out of completed, we're going to set court back to false. And out of that, we're going to go into the reset of the do once. And so what it's going to do is since we're setting that boolean to be false, the loop is going to stop since we set that up here, which I'll see in a second. By the way, to get those, I just double clicked to get root nodes to keep it organized. And so, like I said, we're setting it to false. You know, this branch will come out false there, ending the loop. So that will work perfectly like so. Out of then zero, we want to play the animation. So we're going to come out of there and play anim montage, like so. We can leave the target itself as we want to play this in for the AI. The anim montage will create in a second. After this, we can hold down D, left click to get a delay. Now you can put this as the return value here if you want it to happen after the animation is finished, but I want this to happen during. So I'm going to set the duration to be one second. And then I'm going to right click and get the player camera manager. Out of the return value, I'm going to start camera fade. So this is going to simply just fade to black so we can restart the level with it looking quite nice. So from alpha zero to alpha one, duration, how long you want it to take. So I'm going to set it to be, let's say two seconds and have the color as black. Now also tick should fade audio and hold when finished as well. So this means it's going to simply fade the camera to black over the course of two seconds along with the audio and stay black until we restart the level. To restart the level, we're just going to come out of this and hold down D, left click to get another delay. I'm going to set the duration to be two seconds as that's how long this camera fade takes. In fact, I might set it to 2.1 just to give it enough time to finish. And out of the completed, I'm going to simply open level. The level name here, you want to make sure you spell it exactly correct. So for me, it is the third person example map. But you just set this to be whatever level you want it to open, or want it to restart. And what you can also do is actually just right click and get current level name, connecting this in here, and then connect the return value into the level name there. And this means it will do it in whatever level you are currently in. So if you have multiple levels, you can do this section and that will work perfectly. And to be fair, that's more efficient as well, as you know it's then gonna spell it correctly. So I'm gonna have it like that. So we can compile and save. And now after we've made the animation and finished off this other part, we should be done. But this is the main part done. So like I say, we're rotating the player and playing the animation. So what we're gonna do is go back to our AI chase code. So over here, and where we have AI move to, on success is when the AI has caught the player. So on success, we're going to call function catch player or caught player, anything along those lines, meaning it's then going to fire off this code here perfectly. We can compile that, but what we also want to do is make sure that it doesn't keep checking to see if it can chase the player, which is obviously on the C pawn here. So what I'm going to do is get the on C pawn pawn sensing and the cast a third person character and move that out. And after this, I'm just going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that in there. The condition as caught, putting that under there, and we're going to come out of false into the sequence. So if we are caught, we're going to set this to true, meaning true will go into nothing. False, if we're not caught, we're going to do this code. So I'm going to select that, copy it, and do the same on my other code down here. So I have patrol, and you might have patrol, random roam, or nothing. It doesn't matter. If you don't have anything, don't do it. But if you do, do the exact same there, like so. We compile and save that. And so now all we need to do is create the animation. So I'm going to go back here, minimize this, and find that animation. So I believe it's just in content here. I'll delete the montage, and all I'm doing is just using a zombie attack animation, which I've downloaded from Mixamo. So we can simply go on Mixamo and search for zombie attack. I retargeted it to the UE4 mannequin, and we get something which looks like this, which I think is perfectly good for what we want. So let's close that, right click on it, create, and create an anime montage. So we can use it perfectly. And then if we go back into our AI blueprint here, I'm just gonna press the arrow there since I already had it selected. 
now we're going to play the zombie attack montage there. We compile and save that. And one final thing we need to do is add it so we can actually use montages. So we're going to minimize this and then open up the animation blueprint. So for me, that's going to be mannequin, animations, third person anim BP. And in the anim graph here, at the state machine, we're going to simply get a slot default slot, connecting that into the output post there. And compile and save. Now, if you don't know where this is, you might be in the state machine, so you just click anim graph at the top there. And the slot default slot just allows us to use full body montages, which is what anim montages are by default. So now if we hit play, we can test this out. So you see there, my AI isn't actually doing anything. Now he should be patrolling. So let's have a look at why that's happened. I assume it's because of this Boolean that we have down here. If court is false, it should patrol. Court is set to true by default for some reason. That shouldn't be happening. So again, that's why it's good to test the code. We knew what it was straight away. So we just changed the default value to false. We can then hit play, test this out. And now he is patrolling perfectly like so. So let's test third person first of all. If we intercept him over here, let's not face him. So test that. It's going to turn around, play that animation. Now, however, you can see it kind of broke a little bit. It was spamming the montage as I think it was still chasing us here. So let's see why that was happening as well. I believe it's just purely because we set this here to stop it from looping. So when I was testing this out, I did create two booleans and this is why. So what we could do is just keep this on going longer because it's not going to do anything. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to create another Boolean. So if we create a plus variable again, I'm going to name this one should loop question mark. And I'm going to set that after here as well, setting it to be false. Connect that there like so. Keeping that as false, we go back over to our branch after the rotation loop here. Drag should loop onto court to change it to that like so. And then here as well, after the catch player, we set court to true. We're also going to set should loop to true as well like so so tick it like that and now that will work for the rotation loop of what we need to do is not set court there actually we can just delete that and drag this over we don't want to set court back to false there what we need to do instead is set that after the open level so we're going to set court back to be false there like so and now you don't really need to do that step too much because if you open the level it should restart it by default however you might be doing something different you might not open a level you might just teleport the player somewhere. So this just makes sure that the AI does get reset to work. So now let's test this again. Again, testing is great to do because you can fix bugs and notice bugs perfectly like that. So third person again, facing away, I'm gonna rotate this round, play that animation perfectly, fade to black, restart the level. That worked, let's test it in first person. So we're gonna intercept him, face the other way. He's chasing us, turns us round, plays the animation, and then face the black and restart the level like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we want to do. We set it up so the AI is gonna chase, catch us, play an animation, fade to black and restart the level. So again, whenever it catches us, it plays the animation and restarts. And again, this works in both third and first person. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.